fewer coming out. Oh, Rasheed Wallace. And then there's Joe Smith. Oh, he's maybe more athletic. And then one guy goes ahead of another, and, it's, and he had a good career. It's not hard. It's not easy to tell who is going to be the best. We got the NFL draft approaching. This is a topic all the time when trying to select in the draft. You know, Halliburton. Man, he looks like he's going to fit anywhere. How did he drop so low? Like, what? Can you give us any insight, just from your own personal experience, when you're looking at a draft, how do you know, how do you pick which guy, as having been through it yourself, where some guy hopped up ahead of you based on stuff that didn't pan out that way, how do you pick? Like, what do you look for to know who's going to turn out to be the best pro? Well, it's, it's really all on what that team needs. Um, you know, and I've learned that early, you know, in 95 when I got drafted, because, of course, I felt as though that I was the best player. Yeah, I could have went number one, but, you know, it went to my man, Joe Smith. So, obviously, Golden State wanted that more of a, a scoring forward or scoring big man because Joe was killing him up in college at Maryland. I think he was averaging like 20, 22, 25, yeah. something like it that. Was, so, yeah. they needed that low post scoring. So, it's all mm. on what that team needs for real, for real. It's not necessarily saying that uh, Joe was better than me, I'm better than Joe, or I'm better than KG, or I'm better than Stack, or vice versa. It's, it's all on what that team needs, man. Now, I don't even know why the hell you brought up Joe Smith as far as I'm concerned. He didn't have a post game the second he got to the NBA. He could play, oh, but the post game, but the post game, no, he was a jump shooter in the NBA, a 6'10 jump shooter. That's what the hell he, he was, was a nice okay? Player. No, 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 well, stop he was a nice it. player, yeah, but I had to take him to shoot I like Joe. I like Joe, but stop. Stop it, okay? I'm trying to be nice this morning. Let me ask you this, man. When you look at the Western Conference, Right now, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm looking at A.D., and, and the mindset initially was, if A.D. gets healthy, there's nothing to talk about. But I must confess, Clippers seem on a mission. Max just brought up the Suns. I can't ignore Utah. And a lucky Jamal mm -hmm. Murray got hurt. We wish him nothing but the best. Mm -hmm. Because if he were healthy, Fact. Denver would have been there. As you scour the Western Conference, is it really that simple about A.D. getting healthy or do you consider the Clippers or Utah or Phoenix real big-time legitimate threats to a healthy Lakers team? Oh, they, def they definitely are. Um, I, I had Phoenix as a sleeper team. You can ask Bonzi uh, from our show. I had Phoenix as a sleeper team this year. Not saying they were going to win the championship, but they're doing what they're doing. Um, as far as Utah, uh, you know, that, they're, they're playing great. Uh, they've been playing great for the last couple of years and, and they're getting that continuity together as far as being that team and trying to go further and further into the playoffs. But uh, I think you hit it on the head, Steve, with, with AD. Um, I think he's, he's that pivotal piece for the Lakers. And, you know, no disrespect to Braun and, and the other guys that are out there, but AD to me seems to be that pivotal piece for the Lakers to repeat. And, of course, he ha has to stay healthy. And, um it's, it's going to be hard. I'm not saying it's going to be a cakewalk for them even when AD come back because, as you mentioned, you know, you got Phoenix, you got Denver, um, you got uh, Utah. So it's, it's going to be – and you got Portland. So don't count them out too. Max, so are you – it's, it's definitely going to be a, 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 a race. Max, are you listening to this man Sheed here trying to give his basketball announcer? She trying to take our job. <laughs> this is what this is what she be doing with Bonzi Wells. I, I, I hear it. He ain't trying to take our job. That's what he's trying to do I right there it. with the basketball analysis. What's I up? Hear he's, doing, he's doing a good job too. <laughs> Sheed, let me ask you something real quick before before you get out of here. So you were on a team. I brought up the 04 Pistons. Like once every ten years, a team like that can grab a chip in the NBA, but almost always. Mm -hmm. It's the team with the multiple super-duper stars, with the multiple MVPs, the Lakers if they're healthy this year, last year, or the Nets if they're healthy this year, or teams like that. So having been on a team where it all came together, like you guys did it, the Mavericks did it around Dirk Nowitzki, so that's more like a team like Phoenix or Utah or a team like that. What do those teams need to do to be one of those once in a decade, we're going to steal this chip even in the midst of these superstar teams? Well, something that's not played in the NBA right now, and that's defense. You know, that's that's what we hung our hat on at that 04 Pistons team. We hung our hat on defense from day one when I got traded there. Um, you know, it, it wasn't we just going to let guys score. We just going to let guys run up and down and get 120, 130 points. Nah, nah, that's not happening with us. It's Defense is the main factor. And I think that's what set us aside from – 
a whole lot of other championship teams. You know, we still have one NBA record that will never be broken, I don't think. And that's when we held um, six or seven teams under 70 points and wasn't mm. trying to do it. We were just playing <laughs> basketball. We wasn't trying to do it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.